Well, there's plenty of people try to try to copy James Street and can't do it because you haven't got enough land. And it, it, it was just a unique time frame and a unique uh, ability to underutilise a site that was already dramatically underutilised as a Coca-Cola site, um, Coca-Cola bottling factory. Um, I would challenge anybody to find 40,000 square metres now that you could put that sort of development on in a low-rise area. Tony Johns, uh, you know, recreated uh, Emporium by putting putting um, a streetscape of car parks and shops, same thing, but stacked home units above. I mean, it worked for him, um, and it will work in the future. Uh, there's been a couple of copies of James Street, even the architecture in Melbourne, in Port Melbourne, which has been a failure. Uh, there was one at Springwood, which was a failure. So it doesn't mean necessarily that I guess the guy, when he's asked that question, a lady, whoever asked that question, was meaning the V lifestyle developments like, like James Street. Mm -hmm. Ooh, <laughs> that's a long story. We are post-GFC, by the way. I've declared it over last Christmas. <coughs> it's definitely over. Be that as it may, we've still got a, um, a banking sector who are, um, who are nervous and so they should be in a way because they have a, a debt book which is a little bit hard to control. Um, you have to pay a lot of attention to risk, a lot more attention than normal. And it's not just convincing your bank manager that you've covered future cost increases. You in fact have to give the bank a no risk position which means that the poor old property developer doesn't make as much out of it as he used to, I've got to tell you, and I'm sad to say right now that you have to share your profit with other people, not the least of which are tenants and not the least of which are end buyers, so that you've got the project leased and sold or you've got the project at least risk-free, even if you have to inject more equity by bringing in other equity partners and take down your profit level. So you see me driving second-hand cars and have holes in my shoes, but don't feel too sorry for me. It's OK. It, it will get over it. But I, I hope we don't get back to that high-risk position which has caused the high debt book now, where banks funded 100 and 120% of sites without DAs, without tenants, without with huge risks to go on with, and yet um, were so busily building their debt book that they just quickly wrote those deals without thinking of the consequences and it's as much their fault as it is the debtor. I'm pleased to tell you there is no vacancy at uh, barracks and indeed there is a waiting list of tenants. So if that's a struggling retail economy, so be it. At our Woolworths shopping centres, of which we have three or four, yes, we do have the odd vacancy. We have the odd hairdresser who can't quite pay their, weight, pay their rent. I understand uh, that my colleagues at Westfield uh, have been reducing rents, which is not a bad thing because they were very high. Um, can they? Can those projects be sustained? Though yes, yes. In fact, if there were, if there were another site that we were able to be built at James Street in the western suburbs of, of, of Brisbane, it would be successful, no doubt, yeah. and would get the rents. I might say that when we built that. We fought with the Commonwealth Bank's value to, to say that we could get $200 a metre. And he said, no, you'll never get more than 160 and maybe 180. You'll never get to 200. And then, even though I had a Commonwealth Bank approval for funding for that project and it was underway and Scott Hutchinson was waiting for his progress claims, they didn't come up with the dough because this valuer just blocked it. To Suncorp's credit, they went, they funded it, settled it within...